Howdy, everyone. My name is Nicholas, and welcome to the Headliner Pod Pod. We're a show about podcasts featuring podcasts by podcasters that's hosted by people who help podcasters with their podcasting. On each episode, a few of us folks over at Headliner sit down to play a game that centers around listening to randomly selected clips from over 500 podcast submissions we've gotten from podcast hosts. Why? Well, in order to find what we're calling Pod Zero. Here are the rules. Each lucky contestant will hear a 60-second podcast clip. They'll then need to pick the correct podcast title out from a lineup of three choices before being shown the artwork for that show. Before we get the show on the road, though, let's say hi to each of our contestants for today, starting with Max. Hey, hey, headliners and the headliner team. Good to be There's back. This... Yeah, it's good to have you back. First off, I actually made a comment about design last week that you weren't there for. So I need to like ping you about it after the fact to just get your thoughts on it. But yeah, yeah, I, I was busy to have you back with my sensei learning the ways of the podcast picking art. And my sensei says hi. I'm just imagining your sensei as Lawrence Fishburne. It's just the karate scene in the Matrix. <laughs> oh, you know, but, you know my sensei. Yeah, yeah, Lawrence, yeah. yeah. Ma Master Fishburne. Yeah, good guy. Yeah, he can't be Master Lawrence because that's the guy from Karate Kid. Anyway, moving on, we have Pratik. Hey, everyone. Followed by Jesse. Hello, hello. Christy. Let's go. And our producer, Alyssa. Hi, everyone. And Alyssa, do you or do you not have a fun little ad read for us today? I do, I do, I do. Nice. So let's talk about captions. Captions, they're powerful tools for accessibility, audience experience, engagement, and can even boost your content's SEO. They're also one of our most used features. In Headliner, you can add and stylize caption to your heart's content using the advanced editing tool. To get started for free, visit make.headliner.app and click on the black and purple icon. Okay, very cool. And so let's just get this show on the road. Let's start our fun little game. And, you know, let's open with Max. He wasn't here last week. Sure. Sure. Let's do it. How do you think, or do you think that tech is also coming in and making artists feel pressured to like make art that's shareable, make art that's like Instagram friendly. Tate did like a Yayoi Kusama exhibition and there were a few articles like, is this sellout just to like be on Instagram and blah, blah, blah. Do you think that increase of tech and how cool it is? Like I went to a VR exhibition at the RA and I was like, oh my God, this is so cool. Um, <laughs> do you think that excitement around this new technology is kind of adding pressure to artists who might not be using it to then make art, which is Instagrammable or like really cool looking. Oh my God, yes. That is probably the conversation I have the most with people around me every day. So absolutely, there is definitely this pressure as someone who has to use social media as a way to, you know, grow my platform and to get commissions and everything. Oh my God. Okay. That was a really interesting clip. And... Here are your options, Max. Number one, Stemets say what? Number two, STEM and STEAM podcast. And number three, the wonderful world of STEM. This is a hard one because I feel like mm. one and three sound probable, but like different ends of the spectrum. Like, is this a quirky podcast or a serious one? I could see either of those being actual title. What should be the middle one, which is the one that I feel like is not the real title, but. Well, why why do you think the second one isn't? I'd love to know. What, what was it again? It was like STEM and STEAM. Yes. That's the, that's the whole title. Yes. It just sounds just... like not very captivating and confusing because I'm like, it's isn't it STEAM now? So why are you saying both? Like STEM became STEAM. So yeah, why? that's true. That's my guess. I could be wrong. Does um, the A mean anything in STEAM or is it just and for the record, arts. just so I know? Arts and mathematics. Arts. Oh, Wait, okay. That's the M. Gotcha. Art, art got in there. Art counts now? Nice. Art counts. Art counts. <laughs> Guys, After we win. Time, art counts. Count. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't count until recently, actually. Hmm. 
if you made a painting, everybody would say that doesn't count. Yeah, they just they left that in the fridge in the break room. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I'm going to go with the first one because I think it's a bit more fun. Okay. But I'll caveat this with saying I have no idea. Okay, well, no, you do have an idea, Max. Have a little confidence. Good Lord. Yes. It is Stamets Say What. Thank you, Sensei. You taught me well. <laughs> sensei Lawrence, he blue-pilled you. Stamets, I like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, this was from the episode, What's Next in Tech? And here's our show description. What is it like to work in STEM or STEAM? Stamets Say What has the answers. Each episode host and head Stamet, Dr. Anne-Marie Imifidin, MBE, joins a guest expert to discuss their rich experiences and guide you through the various routes into STEM. Here to help unpack the discussions and ask the important questions are co-hosts Lauren Mowal and Carla Rosario. This podcast was produced by Unedited, which I love. I love that sentence. I don't, I'm assuming Unedited is a podcast production house, something along those lines, but I just love the sentence. It was produced by Unedited. Yeah, I that was saying it was like raw or something like yeah this straight to tape <laughs> exactly that's like what i'm thinking of and i know it isn't and i'm not saying it sounds like it is but i just think that's a really fun sentence to say <laughs> yeah sounds like a good podcast though. yeah it does it sounds really interesting and the topic was super cool because that's something i think about pretty often like is the way we're making material or media being changed by the technology it's being listened to on and there's a lot of like people who think it is there was, I think it was a PBS piece a few years ago where they said something to the effect of, oh yeah, pop songs are all two and a half to three minutes long now because of Spotify. And they mm -hmm. all open on a chorus because of Spotify, because people want you to stay so that they can get the listen for uh, revenue. Yeah, it's a super interesting topic. And it's actually, I've read a bit about it and like, even the invention of vinyl was a shift. Mm -hmm. like this. If we go back to when they figured out how to press vinyl that changed song length as well so definitely really not new but like a new flavor of it. yeah i mean before you had a vinyl recording like there was no reason to limit your song to how much you could True. hold on a record and then all of a sudden you know you want to sell vinyls you can't have a 30 minute song anymore so actually you can you just have to really reduce the quality of it I guess yeah. I think at the time you could not hold that much. Like it would be like, OK, intermission on song one, turn your vinyl over to yeah. hear part two of song. <laughs> one. Yeah, no, there are. I mean, for what it's worth, Max, there are ways to change it. It's just the speed the record plays at. You I, chipmunk it. Yeah, you could chipmunk it three or you play song, it slower, stuff like that. Three minutes. But you lose audio quality. That's the problem. But anyway, we're, we're getting off on a huge tangent. But yeah, I think it's super interesting. And Alyssa literally just pinged our group chat to mention Taylor Swift in relation to this. Go figure. I mean, didn't they? They literally said Billie Eilish and Beyonce made a big stink about how their new albums are actual albums recently. So like the medium we listen to music on has changed to the fact where people creating coherent records is now news. All as I'm saying is Taylor Swift has released several 10 minute songs in the past <laughs> year. So, OK, there you go. Prog rock listeners are just like 10 minutes, whatever. But a yes song, it's like 30 minutes long. <laughs> anyway, let's go on to our next contestant. And at complete random, let's go with Christy. Let's do it. Where's my... Here, I'll use this. Oh, nice. Fancy. Poster? Never published them. But didn't we do four? I think we got to four colors. I don't even think we did four colors. colors. We didn't get all the colors. Yeah. Like, man, that was so much, dude. It was. It was so much. But again, like, we recorded it, and that's like, okay, now I got to go freaking edit it. Yeah. And, and each one was like hour and a half. Yeah. And then on top of that, it was like there, there was really no way we were getting two of those in a night along with something else. So mm -hmm. if it was like podcast, do a set review, that's do another right. set review, right. like that wasn't happening. Right. And that's the thing. It's the podcast. Yeah. Like that's the thing. Like the podcast took so much yep. time yep. that we didn't have time to do anything else. Yeah. After like everything, it would have been about like two hours by the time we start the set review. Right. Uh, right. When we started everything. Right. Right. Because, I mean, I remember doing that because when we did it for Alpha Clash, it's like, all right, 
We're, we'll, we're going to meet up. We're going to do the, we're going to do the podcast. We're going to get a color in. Okay. Okay. And here are your options, Christy. Are you ready? Yes. Just want to make sure. Okay. Number one, hippity hoppity hobbits podcast. Number two, the hobbies plus happiness podcast. And number three, happy little hobbies podcast. Man, it's I am just so bad at figuring out what what you would name a podcast about that kind of stuff. I think I'm going to go with option two. Option two, the hobbies plus happiness podcast. Yes. Okay. Good choice. Good on you. Just just for my own entertainment, because Alyssa did try to like talk me out of it, saying it was too cruel. If I had given you three variations of that title with them being hobbies plus happiness, hobbies slash happiness and hobbies <laughs> and sign happiness. I would have ended it, man. It would. Oh, it, God. <laughs> it would. It's like, this is it. It means this. the call for everyone listening. <laughs> yeah, I would have hung up. I would have hung up. I would have just like, hey, listen, this is a, I would be like, OK, cool. I'm just done doing this. Uh, thank you so much for letting me be a part of this for the last six months. I'm good. I'm good. That's it. That's the end. That's like um, the most polite rage quit ever. I kind of yeah, wish like, I did cool. it now. <laughs> <laughs> you want me off the pod? <laughs> no, no, no. I just my ego's getting unchecked over here. I just need someone to put me in my place. It's a cry for help. I swear. I got it right, and so the power is going to my head, and I'm getting a little more confidence. We'll see what happens next week. Okay, <laughs> sounds good. This is from episode one twelve. Is this the end? And here is our description. Join two friends, Dan and Jim, as they discuss their love for all things tabletop gaming. Each episode will delve into a topic revolving around some aspect of the tabletop hobby. Dan and Jim have been friends for years who met at their local friendly game store and bonded quickly over their shared enjoyment of the hobby. So there you have it. I actually swapped local friendly game store as friendly local game store. I'm so sorry. I'll issue a press statement on that later. Anyway, really cool stuff. And it's a really nice, simple you know, piece of art for it. It's just our two hosts kind of Gaussian blurred out of focus with the logo for the show over it. And I really like that logo. I don't know what the meaning of the card next to hobbies is. It's a plus sign. I'm just thinking it's a first aid kit for some reason, but I do think it's neat. So there you go. Coming up next, we have, let's go with Jesse. Let's go with it. Nice. Absolutely right. And you know what? And her doctorate is no different than mine. It's interesting to me. I, that was a, a big, it's a big win for me personally. That was probably one of the hardest things that you can put yourself through. I mean, honestly, yes, man, I got drafted to the National Football League and managed to play for X amount of years to be a retired and former player. But when you have to get your PhD and go through all of the content, the coursework, and defend that thing, yeah, that's a different beast. That's a different beast. It, what got me through that was my dissertation chair said to me, Omar, no one on your committee knows more about your work, the study of your work than you. They don't know more about it than you do. So when you start talking about it, you will find. You will find. And that, that, that got me through. And I tell you, that the day I had to defend my, my dissertation, I tried to eat lunch and I couldn't even do it. Back in training camps again. Right. Honestly, it was, it was, it was nerve wracking, but it was good. Okay, there you have it. And here are your options. Number one, dare to disrupt. Number two, Nittany Naysayers. And number three, Courageous Cougars. All right. I like, I like Nittany Naysayers. I like Courageous Cougars. But I think I'm going to have to go stay with number one here. I it it called to me at the first and I feel like it would be wrong for me to go back on that now. Hmm. So I'm going to stay true to myself and go with that number 1. Okay, you are correct and I do have to ask now. Have you guys just been like reading it through the reflection in my glasses or something? Are I there go egg as the written crystal on my guides. face. Are we 3 for 3 now? Is this pressure You're three on for, for me? 3. Oh yeah. man. Pressure's on. Unprecedented. I know. The pressure's always on though. It's Freddie Mercury in the distance, screaming under pressure. 
<laughs> anyway, <laughs> here's uh, your... Uh, okay, but my brain just skipped a beat. Hi. Okay. Here is the episode that this clip is from. Exploring name, image, and likeness with former NFL player Omar X. Easy. And the description is... This podcast is about Penn State alumni who are innovators, entrepreneurs, and leaders, and the stories behind their success. So, there you have it. And Pratik, the pressure is on. Let's do it. I'd like to announce David Bowie has joined Freddie Mercury on the bleachers. That's one of the most popular tourist destinations in the country. You recall the movie Tomb Raider with Angelina Jolie? Yes, that was filmed there. The new airport will replace the older Siem Reap facility that was built in the 1930s, and it's about 25 miles east of the Angkor Wat Temple Complex. Now, it's further away, but the new airport will make it easier for more tourists to access Angkor Wat because it will be larger, take in more flights, and it's also a little bit further away from the site, which means it's a bit of a protection there. The Amalfi Coast. So if you've ever gone to Italy and visited the Amalfi Coast, you know you couldn't fly there. Well, starting this summer, you can. Yay. So it'll make it a lot easier to get there as well. Dominica, the natural island of the Caribbean. Okay. And here are your choices, Pratik. Once again, no pressure. <laughs> Number one, the culture report with Q Harley. Number two, traveling Culturati. And number three, Destination Unknown with Jay Gates. That's a tough one. What's the first one again? The Culture Report with Q Harley. And the third one also had someone's name, right? Yes, Destination Unknown with Jay Gates. And what's Do you the want second me one? It's Traveling Culturati. Let's go with that one just because it's like the outlier with no one's I name. I feel like that's that's got to be the one. Yes, it is actually Traveling Culturati. It wasn't nice. the one with Harley Quinn in the title. <laughs> I'm assuming who, who's the third one, Alyssa? I'm assuming okay. the J. The so J this is my Joker, right? favorite. T yes. Okay. I Destination figured. Unknown is my favorite TV show of all time. And it has host Josh Gates. And I oh. was specifically oh. inspired because my favorite episode is them touring Anchor Watt. And they are... Like a sci-fi, like myths and like ghost things. It's awesome. They never find anything except they are credited with the most valid information supporting the Yeti. So, so, so they've never found anything, but they are still the leaders in proving the Yeti's existence. Yes, that is well, incredible. Like they've never like been like captured the beast or whatever. You know, that, that's like the most Scooby produced by unedited thing I've ever heard. I love it so much. It's a great, great show that is no longer, but I think they they rebranded or something. Okay. Interesting. I don't know. Josh Gates is still alive and kicking though. So great show. 10 out of 10. <laughs> so this was from the episode Spring Fling for the Generations. And our description is broadcaster and travel pro Javon Harley delivers the latest in travel news and tips for the business and leisure traveler with features and segments designed to give listeners an immersive travel experience. Features include The Culture Report, where you'll discover more about an individual, a place, or even an object that's significant to that culture. Javon's Travel Minute, reoccurring guest, healthcare professional, author of R Inbound and Avid Traveler, Yolanda Camo, with information and tips for staying healthy while you travel, and co owner of a Vantage International and executive producer Gene Harley's periodically joins the discussion along with other special guests. So there you have it. Interesting stuff. And I mean, we learned what Alyssa's favorite TV show is now. So we're just we're learning all sorts of things today. And now that everyone has gone once and you are still batting a perfect game. So I can't state this enough. No pressure. Please. No pressure. Alyssa, stop pressuring them. Uh, let's just all team up now. And for the love of God, please spare my ego by getting this wrong. I know I said I needed to be like fact checked earlier, but I was lying. I don't. Guys, I can quit being a control freak at any moment. Just get it wrong. We'll try our best, but we're really good. So, you know, we're so <laughs> good. To get it wrong. <laughs> oh, my God. I went to culinary school in Napa Valley in northern Italy. 
and been in the food industry for, for 20, 25 years. I, I love food and I love sharing it. It's been a big part of my family, family experience. Everyone is, they're not all classically trained, but we, we all love cooking and we all love sharing together. So every holiday we're, we're giving, giving up the recipes. And for me, I'm just trying to make sure everything comes out at the same time and have a, have a great meal together. And when I went to culinary school, my, my goal was not to open up my own restaurant. I think that's a pretty standard path or what you're mentioning in Vegas is to go work as a sous chef or a, or a chef on a, on a line somewhere. And I really respect those chefs and it, it's a just really, really tough business. And I've learned that really early on. So I wanted to sort of get out of the main, main path for, for a chef. Okay. There was your clip. I hope you were all thinking about how little pressure there is right now. I know I was. I'm not shaking violently. I'm just excited. So here are your options. Number one, outdoor adventure series. Number two, OA with Howard Fox. And number three, the great outdoors pod. I thought there was going to be something about food in there in those names, but it's not. I could see how you could be mistaken about that. It's a hard one. Yeah. I don't what was the second one again? OA something? OA with Howard Fox. And the first was Outdoor Adventure or something? Outdoor Adventure Series, yeah. yeah. Right, so OA I'm assuming is also yeah. standing for Outdoor, outdoor Adventures. Adventure. It's just mm-hmm. a question of how real is Howard Fox and how often Outdoor Adventurers refer to it as OA. Exactly. I have no idea. Well, if I may. Answer is very often. Yeah. Oh, did not know that. Then I feel like I want to do number two. Yeah, I'm number two. All right. I'm fine with that. Do it. See? Do it, number two. It is wrong. Ah. Ooh. <laughs> Alyssa got us. I know. <laughs> They do refer to it as OA because I worked for an outdoor adventures thing in college and it was just OA. There you go. So this was from the episode Pack Light, Eat Well, Expert Tips for Upgrading Your Wilderness Adventure Food Game, which explains why you guys thought it was about food because it was. And our description is the Outdoor Adventure Series is a podcast production of Fox Coaching Incorporated. We celebrate individuals and families, entrepreneurs, and organizations that seek out and promote the exploration, conservation, stewardship, access, and enjoyment of the outdoors. So there you have it. So sorry. We were wrong for the right reasons. Howard Mm -hmm. Fox exists. People call it OA. So, I mean, still kind of right. My book, you know. I mean, it's still wrong. It's still wrong. I would love to be... (laughs) doing some OA with chef Steve Corso just to see what he can cook up in the wilderness, you know, like that, like the Anthony Bourdain episode where he's on a boat in the Nile river and like cooking up a cocoa with like a bucket and a chicken on the boat. Like I really want Max to start his own podcast about being like a survivalist designing survival. And it's just my room on my laptop. No, no, no. Like, just, like, middle of the mountains. Like, you have to design UX for a shelter. Oh, that that would actually be awesome. I would love, like, <laughs> OA UX. That's an yeah. awesome idea. We're going we're gonna to spin that off. Yeah, OA UX. Everyone's favorite podcast, OOX. So. It's coming. It's coming. coming soon. It's a seven-part HBO Max series, too. Anyway. Yeah, you thank Max? you to everyone for playing. HBO is dead. It's just called Max now. Right. It's just annoying. called Max for Max. I get emails from Max all the time, and I'm confused <laughs> if I said something to myself or it's just FKA HBO with their stupid I, new name. I think we all get emails from Max. I don't. I don't pay for a streamer. No, that's a lie. I have one streaming service because I'm an old man. <laughs> Whoosh. Oh. <laughs> Drat. I see it. You meant the Max that's in the room. No. Can someone explain this to me then? What? <laughs> I'm so confused. Nicholas, it's sarcasm. Oh. Oh my God. 
Sorry. All right. I'm just so okay. happy that someone got it wrong. <laughs> anyway. On that note, thank you for playing, everybody. Thank you for getting it wrong. I don't have to lick my wounds for the next week. And yeah, thank you to everyone for listening. So bye.